Machine guarding. Any means of effectively preventing personnel from coming in contact with moving parts of machinery or equipment which could cause physical harm to the personnel. That's a fancy way of saying that machine guarding can save your fingers, your hands, or even your life. As employee, machine guarding is very important to your safety every day to come to work. There are federal and state regulations that assure the machines you work on each day are guarded to prevent injuries. This hasn't always been the case. In the early days of industry, machines were not guarded. As a result, many men and women suffered cuts and bruises, amputations, and even death. As time went on, the accidents of these pioneers were studied. In an effort to avoid repeating the mistake of the past, machine guarding was born. Today, through the Occupational Safety and Health Act, or OSHA, machine guarding is the law of land. Since it is the law, it's very important for you to understand the principles of machine guarding. And that's why you're here today. The most important thing about machine guarding, or any other safety program, is you. As an employee, you must think safety on every job. You can significantly reduce accidents in your work area simply by thinking about safety and then acting in a safe manner. Another important thing for you to remember is not to use any piece of equipment until you've been properly trained and authorized. Even if you have experience with a particular machine, you must be trained and authorized by your company. You can also improve the effectiveness of machine guards by not tampering with them. Never, repeat, never circumvent the guarding process by removing or disabling any guard. It's not only a stupid idea, it's against OSHA regulation and your company's policy. There are four main classifications for guards. They are enclosure guards, interlocking guards, automatic guards, and remote control placement feeding and ejecting guards. The first method of guarding that we'll look at is enclosure guards. There are basically two types of enclosure guards. There are fixed enclosures and adjustable enclosures. Fixed enclosure guards are the best kinds of guards. These guards completely remove the possibility of hands reaching the dangerous part of the machine. A properly installed fixed enclosure guard will allow stock to be fed into the machine but will not admit hands to the guarded area. Additionally, fixed enclosures will help contain bursting machine parts. The other main type of enclosure guard is the adjustable enclosure. This type of guard serves basically the same function as fixed enclosure guard. A barrier prohibits hands from entering the machine's danger zones. The main difference is that the adjustable enclosure can be altered to fit whatever size and shape of stock is used. Once the adjustable guard is made to fit the stock it's being used for, it provides the same protection as the fixed enclosure. The drawback of the adjustable enclosure is that it requires frequent and careful maintenance. The next major classification of guards is the interlocking guards. Now these guards are used when fixed in enclosure guard is impractical. All interlocking guards should do at least three things. First of all, it should prevent the starting of the machine wherever the guard is open. The second thing an interlocking guard should do is guard the danger point before the machine can be operated. The third thing an interlocking guard should do is stop the machine whenever the guard is open or keep the guard closed until the danger point has come to a complete stop. There are several types of interlocking guards. One example is an electric eye. If the operator's hands break the electric eye beam, it will engage a brake that quickly stops the machine. The next major classification of guards is the automatic guards. If enclosure guards and interlocking guards are both impractical, the automatic guards are the next best alternative. Automatic guards are operated by the machine itself. The automatic guard repeats its cycle whenever the machine is in motion. It removes the operator's hands, arms, or body from the danger zone. Again, there are several types of automatic guards, such as the push-away device with a bearer. 
This particular guard consists of a movable barrier which pushes the hands away from the danger zone. Of course, for this guard to work, the operator's hands must be in the proper position in the first place. This is another example of your responsibility in the safety process. Before undertaking any repairs, you must reach a level called Zero Mechanical State, or ZMS. ZMS requires that you disable all sources of energy. This includes any pressurized hydraulic fluids, compressed air, energy that might be stored in any springs, and even potential energy from suspended parts. In other words, anything might cause any expected movement anywhere in the machine. You must not attempt to make any repairs on the machine until you are sure that you reached zero mechanical state. Well, that's about all for now. Remember that this is just a quick look at some of the different types of guards. There are many others that we didn't have time to mention. If you have any questions at all about machine guarding, ask your supervisor. If you'll think safety on every job, you can avoid accidents and injuries. Thank you.